Hey everybody, it is Ted Lee and we all just watched the season 11 finale of RuPaul's Drag Race. So basically this was the moment we had all been waiting for and VH1 did not disappoint with this finale. Now, not only did they give us the necessary things that we needed to make this a finale, but they threw in a whole bunch of extra goodies just for us. And so you know what? I'm gonna cover as much as I remember right now because I saw it once and I'm doing this review. Okay, well, so to begin, of course, they gave them all a little snippet, you know, of like their little canned footage of this moment built up to now, all the top four. And you know, they did it super VH1 style, you know, they had to do it up, you know, they had to give a little bit of that flavor into it, of course. And so, you know, they did, they put them in black and white. It also kind of reminded me a little bit of Maury when they come before backstage, you know. No, I ain't the baby daddy because she slept with like 15 different men. You know, so it was a real good clip that they did and then don't put together. So I was definitely impressed with they stepping it up, especially with the set this time. They definitely up did this shit, just like Chad Michaels. Up do with this season finale. Now there is so much good shit going on here, but so you know what, another plus that I liked about this finale is with these little canned moments for the top four queens, it also included a celebrity appearance in each little clip. The first one with Akira had Fortune Feimster doing her cop role again, and Cheyenne Jackson came back as well to be a cop later on to explain how the battle for the top is. And not only that, but New York was back from Flavor of Love and I Love New York and all the amazing VH1 shows of the past. She was back to help out. Who else was there? Was T.S. Madison. Oh yeah, and then the very last one was the exercise queen from earlier in the season. So she had another moment to come back up on the show. So it was super cute. Um, so after that, before they moved on to the lip syncs, what they did was they had Miss Vanjie pop out and be like, yo, Rue, wait up a second. You know, everybody wants to see more Miss Vanjie. So they brought her out one more time and then they did her a little good, you know, favor too by putting her out on the streets and have her interview people for why she should come back. And it was super cute and they did a good job on that. So I was super excited that Miss Vanjie had a little extra moment too. And I really thought she was almost about to come in the competition. But so then it gets to it, and it's like, who's gonna lip sync against who? And so anyways, Silky was the one that got to go first, and for some reason when she was on the stage from beginning to end, I swear to God, she looked petrified, like scared for her life. Like I don't even know what it was or why or what's going on, but she just didn't look comfortable, excited, anything for this. I think she knew that she was like the least liked of the top four, and she was just not feeling being put in this position. And so then she didn't even really say the name of Brooklyn. She just like put her hand over to be like, I pick her. Like she definitely was more subdued in that moment than she had been the whole season. And so then, you know, Brooklyn, she got to pick the box. And so she chose box 96. And so then they went and did Bootylicious. And you know, this was definitely Silky's chance to redeem herself, except did she? I don't think she did. Like, her um, performance, it was exciting and passionate. Like, if that was a local drag show, I would have been, you know, on the edge of my seat seeing that shit. But it did not seem like the looks, the wig, it was not enough to go to the next level and continue on. And Brooklyn, I mean, I felt like she was there. Her look, her mug, her outfit, her performance. Everything, it seemed elevated. It truly seemed elevated. This did not, for Brooklyn, seem like just another show. Like this seemed like a national level performance. And so I was super excited about Brooklyn making it. And you know, I do feel bad for the rap that Silky's getting from this season. You know, she got a really bad run. You know, she was made out to be the annoying one. I feel for you, girl. I feel for you. But you know, just like Rue says, it's not your time. But you know, Rue loves you so much, Silky, that you're gonna come back for All Stars 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, okay? All right, and so then it had to come up to the other two bitches to lip sync for their lives and who was gonna make it to the top. Now, Akira Davenport, her outfit that she had was super beautiful, like the all blue silhouette with a couple reveals here and there. Except the issue was the reveals just were not like intense enough. And I just don't think she had the oomph, the star power, the ultimateness of this stage to go to the next level. And 
Unfortunately for her, Evie Oddly definitely did. Now, Evie Oddly went out there looking like a fucking Pokemon. Like, she looked crazy as fuck, but she looked super good at what she was doing, and she was doing a real good job. She was entertaining. She was, you know, doing her little flips here and there at the end. You know, she was performing her ass off. She stood out. And that is very important to do, even without all these crazy reveals some of these other bitches is doing. All right, well, and so then from that lip sync, Evie Oddly continued on. And so then it's official. We have the re-up, the remix, the reunion of Brooklyn versus Evie Oddly, the Snatch Game come to life, rising of the Phoenix from the ashes moment, crystallized and returned to continue hooking, was Brooklyn and Evie Oddly back once again to do this shit all over, kill it, and you know what? I was hoping it was going to be the holy trinity of multiple winners. I was thinking we had the Christmas special, we had All Stars 4, and then we had Season 11 with Brooke and Evie. But so then we go into this lip sync, and you know what? Were they going to win? Was they gonna, who was going to happen? What's up? What's going to happen? So Brooklyn, I felt, honestly, if I was judging it, I would have given Brooklyn the win because she was doing her move. She was going all around. She was acting crazy. She was acting wild. while. Now, Evie Oddly, she didn't have all these reveals that these other girls did, except she did have a head on the back of her head, and she did her, like, I, don't, I can't even duplicate that shit now, but she, like, contorted her body and then kind of did, like, a twist all the way around, and it was, like... Ah, it was super creepy. I'm like, I'm not watching Dragula, okay? But so the winner had to be announced. It was about time for this shit to happen. And so RuPaul firstly brought out the last year's winner, Aquaria. And us gays, we were all like, oh my God, Aquaria's coming back. She is going to need to top Violet Chachki. She has to, she has no choice. She needs to do this better than Violet Chachki did last couple years ago. But that was like the ultimate dress to live up to, the ultimate dress to not fuck up. And I I don't know if she did better than Violet, but those wings, bitch, that was fierce as fuck. And it was unreal. It looked magical. It was beautiful drag, and I was all for it. So Aquaria was back to wish well the next queen to pull it out. And with that, the winner was revealed, and you know what? It's no surprise to anybody, baby, because you know what? Miss Evie Oddly took the crown, because you know what? She is even odder than the rest of these bitches. But so, yes, that was it. That was the season. Evie won. Silky did not, so all you crazy haters can calm down. But, you know, that was the end of season 11. And, you know, of course, I'm going to see you guys the next time around if there's an All-Stars coming up, you know, or if... You know, they skip it, you know, which I don't think they're going to do because I already heard the rumors about season five. So it's all good. You know, we'll be back soon enough for that shit. Please stay tuned because I have exciting other stuff prepared for my YouTube page, including more Dragalicious stuff and more stuff about reality TV shows, too. So don't you worry. I'm going to got more shit going on, even if Drag Race is over. So I'll see you guys again soon. I love you guys so much.